Hello everyone, my name is 3D Hero, and today's video will be covering how to be an effective invader in Gambit. I will be talking about the do's and don'ts to be an invader, while also talking in depth about certain subclasses to run, and weapons to use, and common knowledge to know. Now this video will be more aimed at the newer players who want to get better at invading, either in solo queues or teams. Team invaders probably won't find much use in the video as they already have a clue on what to do, but who knows, maybe you'll find something interesting in the video. Now, Gambit is a new game mode that Bungie introduced to us in the new Forsaken DLC and combines both PvE and PvP elements to bring a new experience for two different parties. Within the new mode, your goal is to deposit as much moats as you can to summon a primeval, then you must kill it to win the match. Through this, you'll also be getting invaded by other players whose sole purpose is to stop you from depositing your moats through any means necessary. And it's from this very instance that matches can go very downhill if you're up against a good player or good invader that knows exactly what to do. So the trick to being a good invader and winning more is to use a sleeper and being in a team of four of course, because everyone and their great grandmothers are doing it. But even then using such a weapon can only get you so far, and team stats can work up until you're going against another team who are equally on par with you. If you want your team to win more, then you're going to need a bit more strategy and common sense to prevail. So firstly, let's talk about some of the subclasses you can use. Each subclasses for the three classes available all have varying roles and impact that can inflict within each matches. As an invader, your job is to cause as much chaos to your opposing team so that your team can bank faster while the other team struggles. With this in mind, you should be using subclasses that provide 100% results on either a singular or multiple group target with little inf effort involved. Now I'm not going to sugarcoat this, short and sweet, go for the roaming and instant super subclasses such as the Gunslinger, Way of the Thousand Blades, Nova Warp, Arc Ballistic, Sunbreaker, Top Tree, etc. As these are the ones that will net you the most amount of damage in burst or in one go. Truth be told, there is no super duper subclass that will net you the best kills as they can all vary in terms of skill, knowledge, offset subclasses and map knowledge. Each one can be used to effectively wipe a team and put your team in the lead while also setting you up to be countered by other players who also know exactly what you're up to and know how to stop you. So knowing when to pop your super becomes a game of cam mouse where if you don't think ahead when you're using your super it can lead to a wasteful super with no impact given. Basically just play the subclasses that best suit you as even if you get one or two kills via invading you're still making an impact at the end of the day. Now as a reminder, I don't recommend you bring any supportive subclasses as they don't hold much value being an invader since you're on a time limit, which you have to remember, and it sets you up to be supered much more easily because you're not actively moving around, depending on the super that you actually use. Talking about sticking with one thing, your weapons or loadouts within invasion should vary for different encounters so you can stay fresh upon skills and create unique but deadly combinations. Now, the best way forward for this is to create two loadouts for yourself, with each synergizing with each other via perks and working in favour of maps. So, on long line of sight maps, you can use long range focus weapons to pick your target off and then at least one close range weapon, while short and clustered maps will be more chaotic and will heavily rely on close range weapons like shotguns or sidearms, but can use mid to long range weapons such as pulse rifles or ARs to keep distance so you don't get overrun. At the same time, the perks should work in conjunction with each other by providing extra boosts that will give you an edge that you would hear so commonly by PvP or PvE players, like Rampage and Outlaw, or High Couple of Rounds and Rangefinder, or Explosive Bounds and Extended Mag, etc. These are just to name a few. What you want to be getting out of this is to be prepared against those that will try to counter you by outcountering them first. Your loadout defines you and what best suits your playstyle as you're playing with something that you feel comfortable doing and we all know being comfortable in situations make the outcome on your end much more smoother since you actually have a better chance at fighting back and you've got much more clear ahead while you're there. Don't think picking a loadout that the top PvP or PvP player has will change the game experience as it's not always the case and truth be told not all loadouts or weapon roles I've seen through a very smart players have been successful in terms of taking on players just because it works well for them, but not for you. This is also a golden rule that applies as well in the Crucible, as each match favours differently for different weapons and perk synergies, to the point where it's encouraged to play into these strengths to be more successful matches, and at the same time cover all aspects of weaknesses that may get you defeated more often. Now you have a brief good idea as to how to prepare. 
So when is a good time to invade you may say? Now this is a factor that many players often seem to overlook when it comes to invading, as most simply think that you invade whenever the pool just opens up right? Well kind of. You see there's a lot more to it rather than running in straight and causing havoc. Firstly, you have to check if the opposing side has a lot of unbanked moats. If they have a lot of unbanked moats, then that's to go ahead to invade and cause as much damage as possible to the opposing team, as this would give your team a good shot at getting their primeval significantly much more earlier. However, if they don't have a lot of moats available, such as a small handful of fives etc, then it's best to wait it out until they stockpile, as these can allow you to put more pressure onto them and then punish them if you get lucky. Now another thing to factor in is how much health the primeval has once summoned. Now if you just invade straight away once the primeval has been summoned, as soon as the opposing team has got their primeval, not only are they expecting you, but you cannot heal their primeval, even though it says so, it's not really making much of an impact. Meaning you're not giving your team as much of an advantage and it's a waste on your side since it's only given them a bit of time. However, like all things, if you wait a short amount of time, then the opposing team will be focused on killing their primeval once their ads are gone, thus not expecting you and to focus on their primeval, and then you can kill them to kill the primeval, leading to you wasting their time even more even if you net one kill. Moreover, make sure you don't have any moats on you, as if you invade with them and die, then well, you know what the end result is going to be, don't you? Now let's move on to some of the do's and don'ts for being an invader. If you ever played Dark Souls, then some of these rules will apply, as the mechanics behind the two are eerily close. So the do's. Do flank around and use cover as best as possible, as you want to get the drop onto them without them expecting you. Look for areas that have clear vantage view where the enemy players will come to, and hit them first before they scatter. And also make sure you have a getaway plan in case things don't go the way you want it to. Next, if you manage to kill 2-3 to three players but the 4th player escapes, then don't pursuit, but rather hang back and pick off the players that decide to try and engage you again. It's pretty much a death trap if you chase up the 4th player, as they could go back to spawn and wait for the teammates, so play it safe and let them come out, as either way they're still going to be wasting time whether they engage you or not. Next, if you're using a super, use it straight away on the enemy so they don't get the time to react, then push into them and be aggressive from there. Lastly, do try to kill the opposing team in one shot as you don't want them to pinpoint your positioning and give it away to the other team. If they don't know where you are, then you can clear with the remaining few. However, if they do know where you are, then make use of the opposing team's enemies and use them as a wall to cover you. Hopefully, this will either damage them while they try to pursue you and allow you to kill them or allow you to escape. Alright, so those are the do's. So now let's move on to the don'ts. And these are pretty much common sense, so I don't need to go all in depth for these. So do not, and I mean do not, move into the central spawning area of where the primary will spawns, as this leaves you too open on the field and little room to get out of. All it takes is one super from the opposing team to end your invasion, or a heavy, or a sniper, or a shotgun, anything. If you're caught out in the open and the enemy team can see you, they can flank you easily and that's game over for you. Next, do not invade if you don't have any heavy ammo or super ready. This will lead to a quick death no matter what strat you have in mind and I've seen this done multiple times by many players who go in, invade and they don't have no super ready or heavy ready. They think that by using simply the secondary or primary weapon will be enough. It's not. And considering that we're still dealing with people using sleeper, if the other enemy team have sleeper ready for you, it's not going to end well. Next, do not try to engage someone that's out of your reach. There is no point of doing peek, shoot and cover tactics. This isn't the crucible, this is literally a invasion. You need to go in there, hit hard, hit fast and then bounce back out. So you need to move on and find someone else that is closer by and easier to kill. Like I said, you want to invade, kill, get one, two or such and then you want to get out of there. You don't want to try to play it safe at long distances, most times you can play it safe but really as you're on a timer you need to at least make a push, be aggressive. If you know they've got some sleeper on them or they have sniper on you or such then play it safe and then try again the next round but do not go in and then sit back at your spawning point and do just peak shooting at them because one way or another either they'll push up on you or you'll run out of time. 
And lastly, don't push into the enemy team's respawn area if you don't have a plan of what you're going to be doing there. Too many times I've seen cocky players wipe my team, and then push into your RV spawn area only get wiped out because they don't have a heavy on them or any super left. Play it safe and play it smart, and you'll be able to wipe them again if you're lucky, or wipe me and my team again if you want to be lucky. And that everyone is all the information I can provide for being an invader. It's all about knowing what works and how to engage properly to be a successful invader, where you need to use the loadouts that fit your playstyle, think ahead in terms of engagements as every invasion will be different, and just learn to adapt, engage and come out on top. But one thing I would like you guys to take away from the video is that most importantly, take breaks. So if you enjoy the content then do leave a like, a sub and also do press the bell button to stay always updated to when I upload, as I would appreciate a lot of you do. But like always, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon.